Good day fellow investors, today we have a lot to talk about because this is out. Bow posts, Seth Klarman's year and letter. For those of you who don't know who Seth Klarman is, Seth Klarman is one of the top value investors out there. He has been doing 20% per year since 1982 and that's an amazing track record and he has been doing that by constantly holding cash, minimizing risks to maximize rewards. Also, he is the author of the book Margin of Safety, one of the core value investing books. And if you're interested in purchasing that book, you can buy it for a few thousand bucks on Amazon. Of course, the link for the book, if you dare to buy it, will be in the description below. Also, if you scroll down on Amazon, we've discussed this book. I'll put the link to the video also in the description below. And if you want something cheaper than margin of safety, you have also modern value investing from a guy that I know. Also, good rating, but cheaper. Back to the letter. Seth Klarman, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, has just written a 25-page letter to his clients and we have so much to discuss and I'll put the timestamps below the video so you can better navigate and come back to the parts that you will feel and I'm certain of that will have to hear again and again. Perhaps what summarizes his letter is this statement, this quote from Benjamin Franklin. As long as I have known the world, I have observed that wrong is always growing more wrong Still, there is no bearing it, and that right, however opposed, comes right at last. This perfectly summarizes what Seth Klarman is discussing in the letter, which is that the current financial situation is dead wrong, and that eventually there will come the impossibility to keep bearing it, we'll all discuss that, and then ugly things will unfortunately happen. But there is a solution as always. So we'll also discuss the top 10 Seth Klarman positions, what he owns in the portfolio. We'll give more details to the value investing framework, how he approaches investing now and what is value investing for him, how to invest in this market that looks like entering into a bear market for longer times. And then the biggest warning is that you are likely asleep in a roach motel. And when you will see that there are roaches in your portfolio, it might be too late and you will not know how to get out of there. So let's immediately start with the market overview, the economy and what Klarman sees as the strongest forces determining your long-term return. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button because it really helps supporting this value investment channel. So talking about the market, Klarman says that in 2021, the S&P 500 has smashed all time highs 70 times. So this is something really, really amazing. The market has gone nothing but up over the year. Of course, since year end, things have been going south a little bit, but that is normal given the staggering performance over the year. But this is really, really staggering. And he says how people are now taking it for granted that stocks can only go up, up and up. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Because if we look at valuations, real valuations that matter over the cycle for long-term investing, if we look at the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio, the Schiller price earnings ratio, it has hit almost 40 at year end. And this is important because this gives the average earnings for the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. And you can see here how there are periods of exuberance in the stock market, followed by periods of despair, exuberance, despair, exuberance, despair, exuberance, despair, exuberance, despair, exuberance. And do you want me to really continue here or do you get the picture. In short, the last time the market was this high from a valuation perspective was during the dot-com euphoria and bubble of the 1990s. Even Black Tuesday was cheaper. Further, price-to-sales ratios are incredibly high from 
an average of 1.5, 1.6, now we are close to three. Of course, everyone is saying this time is different, this time is different, higher margins, tech companies, etc., etc. But Will it really be different this time? That's something we'll have to see. Carmen explains the current situation by discussing Tina. That might be your friend, but it is actually, there is no alternative investing. Because if we look at interest rates, in this case, if you lend your money for 10 years to the US government, interest rates are really, really miserable, have been even lower in 2020, now have gained a little bit of ground, but this is really far below long-term historical averages. And with inflation at 5-6%, you are actually losing 4% of your purchasing power by lending money to the US government. And this there is no alternative investing strategy has brought to the following. So flows to equities have been 1.1 trillion dollars in 2021, which exceeds the inflow of the past 19 years. Flows to bonds, despite low interest rates, have been half a trillion dollars, record highs. So people are pushing their money into stocks and they are doing it now. Look at these flows. So when things get bad, people take out money and stock market crashes. 2012, the debt crisis, budget crisis, Europe crisis, 2016, COVID crash. And look at this. Now, now, everyone is pushing money into the stock market. So now, now, 2021, people have been pushing money in the stock market. Here, 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 not here, not here, not here, God forbid, here or here, here at the top records in history, at the top valuations in history, people are pushing more money into the market. And Klarman discusses it as a psychological force, fear of missing out, your neighbor getting richer and richer, no other alternative, you want at least have something and therefore this euphoria of stocks can only go higher. Also, last time stocks crashed in March 2020, the Fed came in and saved everyone's behind. So people start disregarding risk as something that matters when it comes to investing. Also, it seems now it's easy to get rich. We have crypto trillionaires, we have Companies that go public at ridiculous or no valuations at all, no earnings, no nothing. And it seems that just an idea is worth billions and billions, specs acquiring everything full of liquidity, which means that risk is completely disregarded when it comes to investing and everything went up. At least that was the case in 2021. Maybe it already started shifting given the warnings we have received from these great investors. However, 2021 has shown some cracks already. Tesla, a stock that I'll have to discuss as I'm analyzing all the top 25 of the S&P 500, has boomed but also has declined a little bit showing some cracks, but not even that much considering the previous boom. However, other companies, I haven't received an email about Virgin Galactic for a few months now, and now I see why, because it has been utter destruction there. So all these speculative holdings have been beaten up. Other companies like Teladoc that I discussed somewhere in uh, February 2021 has also had its fair share of beating. And if you want to see my discussion and my conclusion, you can check this video down, put the link in the description below. This was February 2021. And this is a perfect example of value investing versus everything else. Value investing first and foremost, think about risk and avoid investing in stupid speculative things. However, okay, the market is avoiding, but it is narrowing and creating a new risk. It's narrowing itself and the top five positions of the S&P 500 are now 21%. I remember a few years ago, the top 10 were 21% and that was already ooh for many of us. But now we have the top five and this weight because the money keeps flowing into the top top of the tops, 
then the market is narrowing and if we go to the Nasdaq more than 40% of index constituents are 50% below 52 week highs already this is held high because of the market narrowing and the top positions there so we have strong forces in the market both on the negative side with speculative stocks and narrowing those highly exuberant strongholds that seem untouchable of course this is all because of underlying forces that allow for such exuberance and especially now with money being worth less and less with inflation that has reached 4.8 percent in the united states a 40-year high and european union 4.9 percent highest reported level in 24 years then of course stocks are going higher because there is no alternative and then due to inflation there is another big warning for the first time in 40 years the fed has been shifting from managing unemployment and growth to defending from inflation which means higher interest rates and that's something that few of the current generations have lived through over the last 40 years so we don't know what higher interest rate risk means when it comes to investing and therefore many are blinded to the risks don't care hasn't happened in the last 12 years why should it happen now stocks can only go up and there are two scenarios with inflation of course fed can't increase rates needs to do more stimulation to keep things as those are and of course demographics technology globalization pushing down inflation because those are deflationary forces however Klarman's quote is we believe that mounting inflation and the related possibility of materially higher interest rates are posing a real danger to financial markets and this is value investing it doesn't matter what the probability is that something will happen Klarman invests in a way that if it happens I'm okay if it doesn't happen I'm okay that's the key we have to understand from Klarman's message are we invested are our lives financially in such a place that whatever happens I am okay that's the question you have to answer first and foremost not oh we'll have inflation if we don't have it I'm rich if we have it I'm poor that's not a bet you can take with finances in life if you're taking such bets then then well, let's go back to the roaches and the hotel because you'll one day wake up covered with them so this is a pretty let's say negative view of the risk out there but what is the solution what does Klarman say let's look at his positions but before that about what to look when to buy a company of course he is a value investor he looks for mispricings and he always asks these questions before buying something why does this apparent opportunity exist what is the market inefficiency have we inadvertently lowered the bar causing investments to appear more attractive than they really are if a particular opportunity is truly compelling why haven't our competitors jumped in to correct the apparent mispricing and with these questions let's analyze what Klarman has in his portfolio so he's a hedge fund he invests in a lot of special situations and a big chunk of his portfolio is in real estate and real estate related loans but also in private equity and he recently bought I think this compo German European gardening whatever because it was unloaded by a distressed Chinese seller so to answer the question why there is an irrationality the Chinese seller needed money fast and Klarman jumped in and another message that we'll discuss now in the analysis of the stocks is it's important to differentiate between secular and cyclical when it comes to investing especially if you're a value investor looking for bargains we recently discussed Facebook to find the link in the description below and it has been slowing down and now the question is is it secular 
is Facebook and the metaverse and what they created really slowing down due to competition? Or it is just a cycle, short-term headwinds, regulation, Apple, Google going after them, etc. That is something we'll have to see in the longer term, but it makes it more risky. And if you see it as a cycle, then Facebook is a bargain. If you see it as a secular decline, then Facebook is a value trap, for example. So let's go into Seth Klarman's positions. I'll do the top 10, this is just the top six, and discuss, see what he has been investing in. The first position, Liberty Global, is one of the largest cable owners in Europe, operations in the UK, Belgium, Netherlands, and they have these wireless operations also. So a telecommunications company. And if we look at Liberty Global, you can see why Klarman is investing. So stable revenues, they have sold a part of them for 11 billion and therefore revenues are down, but you can see the cash flows are really, really good. And the guidance is, okay, free cash flow 1.42 here, corrected from Morningstar, but you can see this is a company that makes a lot of money. And why does this apparent opportunity exist? Well, telecoms in Europe have been hated for the last decades. It's not nice to go into these stocks. Why is the market inefficiency? Because if you say I'm buying a telecom or cable company, oh, that's so old. You need to buy the tech. You need to buy the Teslas, the Googles, the Apples, not the underlying picks and shovels. That's so old fashioned. Are you lowering the bar? It has a price to free cash flow of 10 so not really is there a compelling opportunity and why others haven't jumped in well perhaps telecoms are not sexy are difficult to understand and value and of course will people keep using cellulars and cable likely for a while yes and then also catalysts what are the catalysts so buybacks, buybacks, and if they spend 5-10% of their market cap on buybacks, this stock should really go up. And if we check Klarman's position, this is a perfect example again of value investing. So he started buying in 2018 when he thought, okay, this is now a value investment, and he constantly added, and especially added in the lows here, and now he already rebalanced a little bit by selling a few stocks. This is from Cheaper Than Guru. You can check all the stocks and the gurus owning with a nice chart. But he has been buying, sold just a little bit. So the position is there, 16% of his portfolio. Thus, it is considered still a strong hold for Klarman. Market cap is 15 billion. That's a price to free cash flow of 10 that's a 10% free cash flow yield. And this explains value investing Seth Klarman style. Okay, whatever happens in the world, I'll get my 10% and I don't care about your 30% or Tesla making 20 times up or something like that. I steadily and steadily compound and over the last 40 years, there have been only four down years for said Klarman, which means he did a great job. The next company in his portfolio is Intel that went from a bean counting CEO to a CEO with a vision and from buybacks and dividends to investing everything into growth, into getting more of that long-term market. And as we can see here, Klarman started buying in November 2020, most buys there, then a little bit still here, and since it peaked, he has already sold some of his position and he has begun unwinding a little bit of interest. So he hasn't been adding more. Perhaps the change from value investment CEO to growth CEO also deferred Klarman a little bit there, but it is still 9.15% of his portfolio. We'll see how Intel's strategy goes, but it is now a little bit risky, but also the reward is a little bit higher than with the bean counting CEO, that is for sure. Next company is Corvo. There has been a lot of trading here, but still 8% of his portfolio. And he has 
but um, mostly been buying over the last quarters despite the fact that the stock has gone up and if we look at the company there are strong free cash flows it is growing strongly and the market capitalization is 13 billion if we compare it to the free cash flow so you have again a free cash flow yield of five to ten percent depending on where the stock is but still growing pretty fast of course to invest you need to be a specialist into the chips for mobile handset industry 30 percent of revenue comes from apple so that's also a reward or a risk i haven't been analyzing the sector so it is a pass for now for me but for those interested into chips going into mobile handsets corvo is very very interesting especially with the 5g 4g's coming into your, our phones then we have viaset another company to understand what's going on and here even klarman is buying without free cash flows the company is constantly reinvesting it is growing and Klarman has bought, bought, and here there was a bigger purchase, 2.5 million shares and a lot of earlier purchases. So he is holding this for longer in this case. They have made an acquisition recently. They are still investing for growth. So uh, he likely sees value there no matter what. Next position is Google bought then sold a little bit bought a little bit more and now lately sold a little bit i'll make likely a google valuation for uh, the weekend alongside the one i have to do with tesla so that will be interesting to see the risk and reward of investing in google now of course the price is now significantly higher than it was here when Klarman purchased so the risk is also higher and the reward lower as said i'll continue with my analysis of the s&p 500 and you can expect a video soon the next company is liberty sirius xm so it's a holding about sirius xm and live nation radio audio entertainment companies with again good cash flows in comparison to the market capitalization that's again price to free cash flow of 10 that's a 10 percent free cash flow yield also something important here to note warren buffett recently acquired of course at a lower price and we are now already higher thus the 20 percent yield turned into a 10% yield of 17 into 10 and this is what said Klarman invests and he has been recently buying more of these stocks so okay he thinks it's still a good 10% yield in this environment nothing bad then we have Veritive packaging company bought a lot of time ago and now the thesis has materialized itself but then again declined and it's a packaging company and it didn't do really well over time but now it projects growth and that growth leads to an earnings per share of eight to nine us dollars compared to the stock price of 94 it's again a price earnings ratio of 10 again set klarman investing and they lowered leverage the free cash flows are there compared to the market cap pretty pretty good then we have nextstar media of course buying buying but now already selling and i analyzed this a little bit when i looked at small caps and it was a bit too expensive for me and i am happy to see that klarman has sold next company is fiserv so financial tech services and if we look at Klarman, he has recently purchased. So if you buy this new holding, then you would keep it at a similar price that Klarman has purchased. If we look at the finances, good free cash flow, market cap about 60 billion. So price to free cash flow of 20, but with good steady growth, acquisitions constantly being made in the system, and organic revenue guidance of high single digits that's very good for a price to free cash flow of 20 so or 15 on 2022 expected earnings so again not expensive for a company that has a strong mode in its core business the market cap 64 billion so not even that expensive and price earnings ratio of 
around 15 at current levels. So on the companies you can see these low valuations and Seth Klarman is sticking to his guns. I'm looking for a 10% yield from the business. I don't care what others think if the companies have cash flows they'll do buybacks, they'll grow, that they have a strong business position, which means likely good cash flows ahead. And this is exactly what Seth Klarman is, and let's talk about his investing framework now. So his approach is to look at mispricing, so where the market is mispricing something, which means that it offers low risk, good reward, and then for the catalyst to adjust that price to a fair price. Usually, as we have seen, it's strong buybacks, for example, with Liberty Group that push the stock price higher and Seth Klarman makes money. And then it's also the risk-averse approach. What is going to fall more? A company selling at the price to sales of 20 when hard times come or a company selling at the price to free cash flow of 10? So that is a risk averse approach. You want to go for the certainty and avoid the crazy bets. And then he goes again into warning us about this market and how to invest with volatility because a reversal of the great times is on nobody's radar for now and that there he sees the biggest danger for the market. Markets have been extremely volatile in history except for the past 12 years given persistent low rates. Nothing bad has happened, thus many think nothing bad can happen. And then risk aversion, so nobody's talking about risk, risk aversion, everyone is taking the more dangerous path, especially with investing and if you have money invested, you want your manager to underperform the market, not to chase the crazy Teslas or we have seen what happened to ARK in 2021. And Markets are ignoring the mathematical teeter that the more you pay, the lower will your returns be. The opposite holds and people expect higher returns no matter the current extremely high stock prices. And then you say, of course, markets climb a wall of worry, a worry of high valuations in the current system. But then again, bear markets are built on exuberance, overconfidence and hubris. What will prevail? We don't know, but we have to be prepared for adversity. That's his first message when it comes to how to invest in this market. Be prepared for adversity. And that's always what I'm saying. We don't know what will happen, but if we are prepared for ugly, then ugly will be easier for us. That's the key. Of course, avoid leverage because when ugly comes, if you are levered, you are dead. And then something very important with Klarman, that's his style, limit portfolio duration. So he always goes for, okay, this deal giving me this much, this deal doing this, this is a catalyst, a year, two years. That Therefore, you'll see always this frequent rebalancing with Seth Klarman. And here, this is a nice indication of how he is doing it. So the current exposure is mostly communications and information technology. But just a while ago, it was healthcare, 2015 was energy, Chenier, so uh, natural gas. Now he sold everything because it got more expensive and he goes there where things are cheap. Materials back in the 2000s, when those were cheap, when those exploded, he sold. And then focus intently on the downside in the evaluation. Think of what can go wrong. Plus, actively manage a book of hedges. We've discussed this a little bit, but all the great investors tell you to be hedged in some way. And for now, my message is that you have to find the best way what's to hedge for you and that's something individual each one of us has to find the best way to hedge for themselves also the best way to hedge is as charlie munger says don't do stupid things so don't believe the fed will save your behind forever because at some point the fed will lose its power that's a given and the entire generation doesn't know about interest rate risk and also this great financial times are propping up business results if we look at sap 500 earnings this spikes here is really staggering how high earnings have gone over the last years if we look more in detail this is the darker blue is the earnings line so of course trump taxes have pushed earnings higher but after the worst situation we have had in decades 
earnings are now projected to be around 225, 230 from just two years ago of being 180. So that's 30% growth of earnings in just two years. That's staggering, that's incredible. But this is due to the forces driving the market, the stimulus that the Fed and other central banks are doing. And that's where he's warning that everyone is overlooking the risk. This is not connected to the real world and investors are lowering or have been lowering their guard when it comes to risk and that's something that's a hedge we can all use and speaking about the roach motel how one day we'll all wake up from investors from governments from central bank and we'll understand that there are roaches and we will not know how to get out of that we can have a myriad of topics there but let's start with the fed and government so if we look at the federal finances they are constantly borrowing the deficits are there have been there year after year and are expected to be there forever now try do an experiment try spending five percent more than your income every year every month every month then tell me how long would it take for the bank to come knocking on your door try that the governments are doing exactly that they are spending more than they are getting based on what if we try that we immediately get repossessed or something but for now the free lunch there is good and that's because the federal reserve is monetizing u.s government debt other banks are doing the same european bank and you are then printing money to cover your debt which is usually called the ponzi scheme and that's a free lunch according to klarman and at some point there will be constraints to more borrowing to borrowing like there is never no tomorrow higher interest rates then foreign exchange imbalances will start to come because some countries will say this is too crazy and uh, at some point it will end and that's the warning that klarman is giving us and it's up to us whether we want to take it or not. And his message is that at some point, the markets will again take the reins. The bond vigilantes is what they are called. People that will start dumping bonds on the market, driving borrowing costs up, and that will be a very ugly scenario for the market, for governments, for reality. And that's a big, big risk that we have to be careful for. And when it comes to risks, if you are in highly speculative holdings, then your risk is big. If you are like Klarman with 10% yields, then your risk is, of course, lower, plus catalysts. And then the realization to conclude, the stock market is not reality nor truth. It's based on the expectations that people have now. So it's a reflection on the collective herd best assessment at any given moment with a healthy dose of irrationality and emotion mixed in. That's buffeted in the short term by the forces of supply and demand. And he discusses how Tesla with the price sales to 18 is the sixth largest company of the S&P 500. Not price to earnings ratio of 18, price sales to 18. But again, to conclude with Graham, the market is a voting machine in the short term and the weighing machine in the long term. Be sure to have your value well anchored in good weight things so that when the market starts weighing again, you are okay. And what matters then is the ultimate reality of business valuation and cash flows that are being more directly delivered to shareholders. That's investing at the end. That's what we try to do here by businesses. And with that message, I wish you a great day.